No H. S A R A. Oh. Yeah, I've been spelling your name wrong all this time. This is my wife's aunt. Yeah. Wow, oh, cool. <laughs> Good to meet you. I'm David. Oh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Cool. Yeah. We're real. Okay. All right. So, I am new at this, so I have cue cards. Okay. So, um, uh, do you have a claim that you would like to talk about? Um, gosh. Nothing specific. Okay. Because we uh, do have the can of words. Okay. I want to try that. Okay. You can take the mo and. Victory. Okay. Does that bring anything to mind, or do you want to draw again? Probably draw again. Okay. That one. Mm -hmm. no. yes. <laughs> I'll probably think of so many things, like <laughs> later things will come up, but I can't see what this is. Reality. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Um, so, I know that this third dimension is not typically our real reality. It is an illusion. Okay. How would, how do you mean by that? Meaning that, gosh, we've learned so much on it recently in my own spiritual awakening, that this is, this earth life is a school. Okay. Um, and it, it's not, this is not who we are. Ooh. Oh, I got it. <laughs> this, this is not who we truly are. Our spirit um, is who we truly are. We are divine beings of love and light. Okay. How would you define spirit? Spirit is our, our true form. It is, um, this is what I've heard typically called a meat suit that we are in right now. <laughs> um, yeah, it, I, all I can really say is it's our true form, okay. whatever that may be. Um, this might be a repetition of that question, but can you give me your best example of how that works? Um, well, we incarnate into this life. We are um, counseled before we, we are born into this life. We are told what we will go through. Um, we choose our parents. Our, our, most of our situation, obviously, we have free will in this life. So a lot of things will happen to us that we don't um, choose. But how we, the important thing is, is how we react to those things. But I kind of got off track. Um, what was the... The question was, uh, can you give me your best example of how that works? Oh, yes. Yes, and so in, in, then we incarnate into this, into this life and we go through our trial as best we can. Mm -hmm. And then when we, live this, when we leave this life, we go into back, we go back home. Mm -hmm. um, And uh, pretend I don't know anything about this. Okay. How would you, uh, how do you define back home? We don't really remember it right now because we have a veil. Mm -hmm. We don't, we're not meant to remember where, where like what it looks like, where it is. Mm -hmm. uh, how important do you find this subject? Oh, it's very important. How important? Yeah, it's very important. I think people need to start waking up. This is like a time of, of awakening, spiritual awakening. Uh, how does a spiritual awakening look to you? Um, it looks like knowing that there is no reason to fear. Um, there, we need to learn to, 
have we have an awareness or an understanding that we are all connected, that we are all um, children of the same source, and there should be more love and more light in the world. That is the awakening. Uh, do you think that people who disagree with you are wrong? No, there will always be people who disagree. Yeah, everyone has the right to their own beliefs and their own opinions. Mm -hmm. If your belief was faulty in some way, would you want to know about it? Yeah. Yeah, for me, truth is very important. No matter what that looks like. Um, do you suppose that there might be a way to test it? You know, I don't know if there's a way to test it, but I know from... Um, I have been extremely interested in, in hearing people's near-death experiences. And that is really the only way people who have been pronounced dead, who have gone to the other side and have been told it is not their time and need to come back. Uh, how confident are you in this belief? Oh, I'm very confident. On a scale from zero to a hundred percent? I am probably close to about 95%. 5%. <laughs> yeah. And uh, an example that he taught Let's see if I can do this right. What is your confidence level that if I were to drop this pen, it would land on the whiteboard? 100%. 100%. Okay, so uh, the difference in that is about 5% between your belief in your claim and this. Uh, how would you... Uh, what would it take to change your confidence in either that this would drop or that or, or that this would land on the whiteboard or that uh, your belief could uh, shift either up or down? Like if you move the pen? If I were to just drop it. If you were to just drop it, yeah. where it's at, I there's a 100% chance it will land on the whiteboard. What if I drop it from here? There is probably a 95%. It, it could bounce. And... Okay. All right. And uh, comparing that to your belief, like th how, how do you know that, <clears throat> that this would drop and land on the... Just... Or at I... least hit it. You know, it doesn't need to stay on it, but that yeah. it would... Oh, yeah. That, there's a 100% chance it'll be able to at least hit it. Okay. And how do we know that? Just from, uh, what's the, <laughs> but no, I don't want to say physics, what is it? Um, what is, what is that? Just uh, physics is the word that came to my mind. Oh, okay. So. It's just <laughs> physics. <clears throat> um, and truthfully, physics and science, our physics and spirituality are very much coming into alignment. How so? Just that they, just the tests that have been done, and I can't be specific, but they are finding that, like for example, reality itself has been scientifically proven that you can manipulate your own reality through your thoughts. And it is a scientific proven fact. Can you give me an example of that? Um, yeah, you go into um, through meditation, through constant meditation, you can go to the quantum field, is what they call it. Mm -hmm. Like super wealthy people have known this for quite some time, um, and you can alter alter your reality to become anything that you want. How accurate would you say that that uh, like 
the real the reliability of testing that. How like one hundred percent? Yeah, or, on a percentage. Yeah, it's so. it's been one hundred percent tested. Yeah. But it takes a lot of mindfulness. Okay. It takes a lot of, of meditation. It, it it takes a lot of um, changing your mindset, your own mindset. We've been trained to. Um, we've been trained in a slave society, basically, to fear and to um, to hate, to be prejudiced, racist. It's just this constant mindset that we've been trained into, and we have to train ourselves out of that. Mm -hmm. Um. So you said a hundred percent. That. W would that mean that there's no chance that the test could fail? That somebody could not succeed at uh, changing their mindset if... It, it takes constant work on yourself. It, con it takes changing yourself. But the people who have accomplished it... Okay. Um. Uh, what gives you that amount of confidence in, in your claim, going back to your original claim? Just from what I have seen and what I've heard, um, it's, it's like there's so many consistencies. Do you have any examples um, that you could share? I can't think of any other top, off the top of my head, really. But, like, if you've heard of Dr. Joe Dispenza, um, Jose Silva, the Silva Method. I may have heard of it. Can you yeah. tell me about it? Yeah, it's, um, you can go into that, that level of meditation, that's constant meditation, where you can even heal your own body. You can heal others. Um, mm -hmm. You can change your own circumstances. Um, and it's been, it has been scientifically proven that this does work. Um, <clears throat> could you if pressed, and don't feel like you need to do this right now, if pressed, could you come up with uh, five clear examples of like reasons that you have for believing this? Five reasons? I don't really know if there are five. But um, um, how many could you think of? Well, the two that I mentioned, mm -hmm. the near death experiences. Okay. Um, if we <clears throat> if we had a pie chart of those two, what percentage of the pie chart would you would you give each of those? Fifty fifty? Yeah. Excuse me. Uh, so they're both equally convincing for you. Yeah. Because there's there's so many um they all like come together. It's like how can I say? Um Through each one, they, they pretty much have to say the same things. Okay. Um, but the same conclusions. Uh, asked about um, if the test can fail, right? Uh, 
can you imagine a a scenario in which that sort of te or testing either of these could fail? Probably just the individual, an individual person that was trying to to accomplish it. Okay. Um, obviously, then I'm I'm not talking about the near death experiences, but like the meditation, the changing the mindset that that would if if you if you give up. Um, if you give up too soon, it's kind of like, it, it, it's individual. Okay. So then could you say that, uh, these are subjective? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, have you had a near death experience yourself? I have not. Do you know anybody personally who has? Um, not personally. Uh, would the same reasoning work with different clans? The same reasoning? Yeah, so, um, I, I may have jumped a little too far ahead on that. Um, <clears throat> not defined the examples. Um, My mind grew a blink, so. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. Can a person have faith that something, in something that is not true? Oh, there are a lot of people that I... But I don't know if you can really... Yeah, that's a hard one because it's true for them <laughs> back to subjectivity yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. um uh taking a step aside um the to you what is the difference between truth and accuracy or true and accurate um I don't know. I guess something may seem seem accurate due to what we can see, but it's not necessarily the truth. Um, can you give an example of something, as far as you know, is accurate? Oh my gosh. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, could you um, could you agree? You jump in anytime. <laughs> <laughs> uh, could you agree that we are all living a shared experience? Uh, from what it seems, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And would you be more inclined to define that as a true statement? or an accurate statement? Uh, probably accurate. Okay. And why? Um, that's a good question. And I know, I know that this subject has come up before and I'm like, how to explain this? I don't know. Oh, it's, it, I don't even know how to explain it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, is there a way that we could test whether this is real, a shared experience, or a simulation, for example? I don't think there's a way to really test it. Yeah, I don't know if there's either. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fun thought experiment. Yeah. Um, okay. Are there... Can you think of any alternative explanations to near-death experiences, to 
meditative successes? Um, any alternatives? Yeah. A lot of people have, have um, disclaimed people's near-death experiences by saying it was the drugs or, um, or it was a dream. But they are, they are clearly, they come back near like, I, you know, people that have been on drugs before and they're like, this is not the same thing. Because when they go into, when they leave their body, that world is so much more real than this one. And they say that this life that we live in is more of a dream than that one. I'm... Not going to call you out on camera to see if you have <laughs> tried drugs. <laughs> um, have you ever had a very realistic dream? Um, no. Mm -hmm. um, uh, if there were other possible explanations, would you like to know them? Yeah. Uh, where do you think you could find uh, answers to that? You know, I don't know. Um, I don't know where I'd find answers. Uh, to you, would this be something that people should believe that you <clears throat> would want them to believe or that you know sort of a give or take you know it's up to you sort of mentality it's certainly worth looking into um, people need to maybe have more of an open-mindedness um, <clears throat> can you think of any uh, we'll say experiments to practice open-mindedness. Experiments to practice open-mindedness? Yeah. Like, what can somebody do to be more open-minded? I guess find out for themselves. Um, if they hear something that goes against what they've been told or what they believe don't be afraid to study it for yourself don't be so close that your your political leaders or your religious leaders you know are keeping you from exploring um. <clears throat> Uh, is there a possibility that you are mistaken about your about this belief? I I don't know how, how I haven't had a near death experience for myself, but for the past three years, um, I have really looked into into people's experiences and there are so many um what is the word i'm looking for there's so many um i don't want to say synchro synchronicities it's it's i can't even think <laughs> right now i think i'm because i'm on camera um There, there are so much that is alike. I mean, you know, people's near-death experiences are unique for them, for them, but they're, they have, um, what's the word I'm looking for? When something is so, like, so many things um, are the this, this same. <clears throat> uh, I think you were close with Synchronicity. Um, sympathetic? Sym 
I forget what the word is. Do you know the word? What is it? What, what are you asking? <clears throat> uh, define it again. Like when, when so many things um, are, are the same, like they come back with the same message or... Consistent? Yeah, the consistencies. That works. Consistency. Consistent, reliable. Yeah. Okay. Are you okay on time? I said you didn't have much time, so I'm just checking it. Oh, yeah, I think we're good. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And, <laughs> and we're getting close to being done. Anyway. Okay. <clears throat> um, what new evidence <clears throat> could significantly shift your confidence either direction? I don't think it would really shift one way or the other. Um, I, I mean, I hear so many different viewpoints and I just kind of keep with, okay, that's what they think. And I'm, <laughs> I really don't shift one way or another. Um, do you meditate yourself? I try. You try. Uh, if, so even if you had a fantastic experience, you, your, uh, ranking of it would stay at 95 it would oh if i had up. my own experience it would leak to 100 okay. percent. and same with a near-death experience um yeah. and can you think of anything that could uh shift your confidence down uh if any of these people who uh it was Jose... Jose Silva. Silva. If he were to uh, write a book that says, I was making all this up, that wouldn't change your... No, because it's... I mean, they even still have group meditation groups that are... Because what he's done has been proven over and over and over again. I wouldn't believe it. I mean, he's he's long past now, but like. All right, so I guess he couldn't write the book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. But his family continued his work. Um, if if one of his family members uh, wrote a disclaimer about uh, about this. I would wonder if there was an agenda behind it because it's been proven over and over again. Uh, could it be possible that there was an agenda for it? Well, whatever it was, it worked. <laughs> <laughs> um, if there were, um, what might, have, might, what might that agenda be? Um, well, I, this case, the agenda would be for healing and spiritual growth. To, to give people hope. Mm -hmm. Can, can false hope be damaging? I don't think any hope is damaging. If it keeps you, if it keep, keeps you going. Even if uh, you put all that hope into one basket, all your eggs in, into that basket of hope, and find out that it's been that it's I, been a lot, that I, it's been, yeah. Um, could, could that take you? deeper than you were before you had that hope. It's... It might. I mean, it, it would be discouraging. Mm -hmm. But I think the last thing that dies is hope. <laughs> Let's see. Um, I'm trying to think of an example to apply for this question. Um, <clears throat> okay, uh, going back to something you said earlier about meditation. Mm -hmm. If another person were to use 
the same method, like put all their energy into meditating and came to a different conclusion. Uh, how could an outsider observer decide which one of your claims is more likely to be correct. I don't know. They, if they if like they meditated and it didn't work the way that they had hoped. Yeah, they probably an outsider probably wouldn't um look into it. They would probably be discouraged from like meditation practice. Could that be considered a failed test then? Um I don't know exactly fail. I mean, I guess in this case, yeah. Um, I think they would still have to try it for themselves because again, it's subjective. They would have to try it for themselves. Is there any objective, um, conclusion that could be uh, could be made about either of these meditation or at, uh, so near death experience would you be would it be fair to extend that to an afterlife Is, would that okay. mm -hmm. so can you think of any objective test that could be performed not in this physical world, no. <laughs> uh, are there any questions that you think would be important to ask to somebody who is making such a claim or who, uh, who might be, uh, I don't know, defying the claim? Oh, well, I don't even know. But, like if somebody didn't believe in it? Or somebody who, like, if you had a chance to ask uh, Jose Silva, Dr. Silva, uh -huh. and if you had a chance to ask Dr. Silva or his family, who are still alive, um, any questions, um, what might be important to ask to, to find the reliability of the claim? Um. I would, I love hearing people's experiences and of how many people this has worked for. Uh, what would be a good question to ask yourself? How, like my willingness, like it's very difficult to meditate. <laughs> so how willing am I? to put forth the effort into meditation. <laughs> okay. Uh, how did you feel about this, about the chat? Good. Did yeah, it... I, I wasn't much help, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, it was great. I really appreciated it. Uh, did this chat generate any interesting thoughts for you? Um, I can't think of any, anything did, different. Did it get you to think any deeper, to question anything? Did it reinforce your... Probably the, the study. Yeah. Like how they would study this if somebody were just adamant about it, finding proof of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure that there, there are ways, but I don't know. It would be interesting to know. Um, do you have any questions for me? I don't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. um, well, did you enjoy the conversation? Yeah, Great. I did. <laughs> I'm glad. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, cool. Right. Awesome. Good. Well, right. I hope I helped. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're the first person I got to spot, speak with today. So, oh, good. you know, I, I, I don't feel curious. like it was a waste of my time today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks again for stopping. Oh, yeah. No problem. Would uh, you be interested in trying this? I don't know what to say. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of hard for me to, to express my thoughts, but... I appreciate you taking Oh yeah, the time. no problem.
All right, so what do you have to say about the, from where I was, from the Sarah one, from where I was sitting, I thought that that was, that was really good. I, it seemed like the cue cards helped. A lot, yeah. <laughs> they, um, I felt a lot more confident even just having them in my hand so that I could refer to them if I felt like I needed to. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, there's a lot of really good questions on there, and I liked, before I forget, I like your question about their idea of the difference between truth and accuracy. Yeah. Uh, that came up in a discussion in uh, on the Discord server. Really? And I it stuck with me. It, it's, I actually wrote... Um, Instead of just scratching out true, I wrote accurate next to it so that I would um, uh, remember to ask yeah. about that. Because, and depending on how they answer, I can use either true or accurate in my in how I ask follow-up questions. I like that. Because I tend to think that accuracy when they hear accuracy, they're hearing what I'm more interested in. Sure. In a, in more of like an, uh, objective sense. And it kind of, um, it, it kind of solves the subjective truth idea that some people have about it. Mm -hmm. And so when someone hears accuracy, it seems like from from my perception, uh, that it's it tends to be more related to our shared reality, our shared world. Is that your experience? I, I can't say that I have a lot of experience with it yet, but that's the that's part of what I'm going for. The hope that they will perceive it in in that way so you ask them to tell you the difference between those two words and then depending on their answer to that that's the word that you go with throughout the rest of the conversation generally okay cool i mean there may be a reason to switch to the other one but if they give more credence to one word over the other then yeah. May as well work with what they're comfortable. Sure, yeah. Cool. All right, so Sarah, mm -hmm. from what I heard, which was, wasn't, I didn't hear a lot of it, um, but there's something about, like, different dimensions, different planes of existence and afterlife and, and near-death experience and meditation is the reason why she thinks those things are real? Yes. Um, the impression that I got is that uh, near-death experiences and meditative, meditative experiences and the studies thereof um, add weight to the concept of an afterlife. And there was like a book or something, right? Yeah. Uh, Jose Silva, Dr. Silva. Um, I didn't catch the title of the book. I know she said it, so it'll be in the recording. Um, uh, but he began his studies and his family and presumably his organization have continued the studies. Um, uh, she didn't talk a whole lot about the book, but it sounds like it would have been um, interviews with people who have had near-death experiences. Uh -huh. um, and what I heard, the, the part about the book, is that the book supported her confidence, but if the book was discredited, it wouldn't change her confidence, right? Right. That's interesting to me. Yeah, she said that she would um, question the the motives, or not the motives, the... Um, she would question whether there was an agenda 
to discrediting. Okay. And is that when you went to, um, how do we know there's not an agenda for writing the book? Correct. Yeah. Okay. So it sounded like the book supported it, but if taken away, wouldn't decrease the confidence. And so I, that she, she seemed pretty confident, um, in its legitimacy, regardless of the source. We got 10 minutes for an interview? I don't know what I talk about. We have ways to make you talk. <laughs> <laughs>